Well, as we turn back uh, to Genesis chapter 6, we have discovered three things. Uh, and you can view this in the world today. So when we're in Genesis, yeah, you can learn from Genesis. I can learn from Genesis. But I want also your attention in the world today. What are the signs of Jesus' coming? Jesus said, turn back. So there where we are, and we're in Genesis chapter 6. We've looked at three signs so far. An anti-God philosophy. Man is smart. We've got it figured out. We're doing okay. We don't really need God to tell us anything. That was sign one. Sign number two, uh, advancement in technology. Well, look how God has blessed our nation. And look how we've used that technology to curse God. Number three, lack of importance for God. God is just a little weekend thing. Uh, God never did say that. God says, I love you so much I sent my son not to die for you on Sunday, but any day of the week you come to me. Though your burden is heavy, Mm, I will set you free from sin. Anytime, night or day, any day of the week. As you see, folks, today, lack of importance for God in His Word. Now we come to the fourth sign today. Corruption of mankind. If you have found your place in Genesis chapter 6, stand with me if you would as we reverence the reading of God's Word. This is not a Baptist doctrine. This is not something that I've dreamed up. This is the Holy Word of God. Amen. Genesis chapter 6 in verse 11 through verse 13. Now remember, keep the world in which we live in today on your mind. Look at verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth. And behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. God said to Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Who says God doesn't look down upon us? Mm. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your precious word. Father, we thank you for each and every one that's gathered here today. Father, we thank you for those uh, by Facebook uh, that's joined us today. And Father, we just praise and glorify you. Father, let us glean here from the scriptures. Every corner of the field, uh, through the field, let us, let us get this harvest that you have for us in your word today. Father, let us understand let us gain knowledge and wisdom in your word today and know that the end is very near as we look at these signs. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Everyone said? Amen and amen. And I listened to a little bit of Scott's message that was on Facebook. And uh, um, boy, I tell you what, uh, he was right on time in his message. And, but now see, I wouldn't have treated you like Scott did. Now, Scott's going to get me for this. But I wouldn't have treated you because um, I heard about. Um, well, now, if I don't get an amen, I'm preaching till 1 o'clock. I would have never treated you like that. I'd have said 2 o'clock. Amen? Mm, that's a good fellow right there, a good brother in Christ. And I'm very thankful that he came and, and helped. Uh, Genesis chapter 6. Wow, here we are, corruption of mankind. Well, where do we start? Well, when do we end? Well, what's the middle ground? Where is there not corruption? Can we just go to the next sign and pass this? <laughs> In our world today, the earth was corrupt. Now, I'm not talking about the dirt and the trees. I'm talking about mankind. God is, not me. But I'll be preaching on mankind today and the, the earth. And this really is terrifying verses. Because I've got loved ones all over that I've known 
for many, many years that never professed Christ? When is God going to say, enough is enough? Well, our loving God, you better read the verses. Don't explain God away. God is very quick and powerful, uh, and, and he can do uh, a terrible thing, which in the Old Testament means awesome. We, God is not bound by man. So when we look at verse 11, the earth was so full of moral decay. You say, yeah, but how was God doing this or did he just... Dis-? No, it was before God. God looks upon every human, every circumstance, every sin, every organization, every church... Everything on the earth is before God. We are but naked in the eyes of God. Now that is in itself a fearful thing. Because if you walk out of those church doors today and you go out in society for you to not be involved in these sins, that's a difficult thing to avoid because it's everywhere you go. Corrupt, moral decay. Let me give you some points here and see what you believe. As we are in our world today, the earth was in moral decay, moral ruin before God. Not the church, although it is. Not before the preacher, although it is. Not before you either. It's, this is before God. And... When we look in our world today, you say, well, do you think our world is really that corrupt? Do you think God is really paying attention? Yes, I do, and yes, it is. Listen, our nation, I'm not going to talk about the whole world at this point. I am an American, and I was born in America. And I'm a proud of all of, of many things that the United States has accomplished. Very proud. Proud of our military. Served in our military. Very proud of numerous churches in the doors of the United States. But also, as I view it as if, as God views it, in the days of Noah, when you turn on your TV, and you see the White House of our nation speaking, I would rather watch Donald Duck cartoon because they're so morally decaying. You know that the White House is corrupt. It's been corrupt. We've had so many corrupt leaders. Do you think God is trying to tell us something? Maybe they went into the office with all the great attentions. Maybe they went into the office with a Billy Graham prayer or someone else praying. And they were lifted up. And they submitted themselves to the White House as president, vice president, whatever it may be. But folks, the White House is so corrupt. It is supposed to guard the people and support the people not to be a mockery to us and to other nations. Can I get an amen? amen? Our politicians, who do you vote for? Mm-hmm. Corruption. Everywhere you look is corruption. Everyone has a shady past. Everyone has a shady current life. And the media is going to be so proud to point that out because Good news never sells. It's the negative news that sells on TV. Our government, in our states, in our cities, in our counties, you can run into an individual, not a biased individual, but you can run into an individual that maybe has worked in, have been associated with the county, the city, or the state, 
and you'll say, man, they'll say, man, let me tell you about the corruption that's going on. Folks, where, where does it end? When will it end? And then also our society, our neighborhoods are corrupt. Stop at a gas station. Just the other day, there was two men. I don't know what their problem was, and I never got involved. I got back in the car and left. They were standing there uh, ready to fist fight, just cursing one another out. You say, well, that's pretty normal. Their little kids were standing beside them. What is, it, what is going on? Man is corrupt. You say, well, I wish you wouldn't talk about our nation. Our nation is corrupt. And it hurts my heart just like it does yours. Relationships on almost every level is corrupt. Friend, wife, husband, child, dad, grandparents, something is always corrupt it seems. You see it in the news everywhere you look. You don't have to look. You don't have to search far. Businesses corrupt. They're just to make money and to rip you off. How many of you get scams on your calls on your phone every day? They're called a scam for a reason. The exchange of money is corrupt. From Wall Street to the bank is corrupt. It never used to be that way, folks. Not like it is today. And one last thing there. In our nation, we have church leaders that are corrupt. And we have churches that are corrupt. God help us from falling uh, into something such as that. Scandals in our world. If I share a story with you about a scandal about the Bushes or about the Clintons or whoever it may be, and some of you know what I'm talking about. Their whole presidency was a scandal. But if I begin to share that with you, do you know what you're going to do? Yeah, I remember that, and you brush it off. Because scandals, corruption has become a normal way of life. We're not surprised by anything anymore because it is so common. It's normal to treat people and to rip people off. It's normal. We're just going with the flow. No matter how big, we're no longer surprised. Point number five, violence. <laughs> how do I begin with violence? Where do I begin who do I begin with? What parties are associated? Folks, when God, as it put it in human terms, no, He doesn't have to do this, but when He looks over the edge of heaven and looks down upon a nation that was founded in our Constitution by Christian morals and ethics in His Word, can you imagine God just shaking his head and saying, what have you done? Now, it's interesting in the Old Testament that when God sometimes appears, he says, go out to the city, see how many you find that is righteous. <laughs> go out today and see how many we can find that is righteous. Now, I got a word for you today. No, I did not make this up. It's in the Hebrew. It's the word for violence. We have seen violence on TV outside of the United States, although the United States has got a finger, got a hand in it. I'm not saying that's good or bad, but outside of the states we have seen Israel being attacked since last October. During one of the festival weeks, the word for violence in Genesis here is the word Hamas. Hmm. Imagine that. Hamas. 
Violence is just total disregard of right conduct. Uh, total disregard to God. Total disobedience. They're turning away from God. God's standards. God's word. The Bible says here, the earth was filled with violence. The earth is filled is talking about people. The people was overflowing the world in Noah's day with violence. Because the violence that the people was doing had taken control over the world. Folks, you can walk out of these doors. Now, I'm not trying to scare anyone. But you can walk out of these doors here at the church, out of home, out of the workplace, and you may never show up at home again. This world is a dangerous place. It's full of violence. I'm not telling you nothing new. But when you begin to see these things in Noah's day, and you relate them to our day, hmm, when is the Lord going to return? The earth was filled with violence. We know that Cain killed his brother Abel after the fall of man. And violence continued all the way up to the flood. Now let me tell you something. When this violence got way out of control, God said, it is enough. I've had enough. Because man was wicked, evil in their imaginations, in their life, because man was so evil, God said, that's it, and the rain began. I, with all of my heart, believe that God has the right to say that today about the world in which we live. You say, oh, but he's a loving God. But God is going to send his son. It's going to be over. And as we look at this violence, and we look at this moral decay, let's continue on. We see in the world such violence from revenge and jealousy, unjust treatment of others and murder <clears throat> per year. Globally, you say, well, I don't see that much violence. We slaughter unborn babies in this world. Last year, according to this poll, there were 70 million babies aborted. Do you not think that God sees that? Well, of course he does. Now, I know there's forgiveness of those that is unlearned and unknown. I understand that. But folks, the violence is in every, every newscast. Everything you see is negative, negative, negative. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Genesis 6 and 13. God said to Noah, All flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence. I will destroy them. How much longer, Lord? How much longer, Lord, is your long-suffering? Lord, how much more patience until you say it is finished? God has every right to do what He sees fit. Because he is God. Amen? So when we talk about this violence, now watch this. Now, I might not get an amen here, but a lot of times in the homes of the lost, violence has a doormat where it can clean its shoes off and come right on in and sit in your living room. So let me go on this side. So violence in the world today has a floor mat on some of the Christians' homes and we say, come right on in. You say, wait a minute. When 
at an early age. Mom and dad, grandma and grandpa. At an early age, when our youngins, including ourselves, but when our youngins get to see wide open TV, anything goes. Just go watch TV, kid. I'm cooking dinner. Well, they're going to find something. Video games, computers, internet, cell phones aid our youth in this violence. And then we want to wonder, Lord, why does my kid not want to come to church? Well, maybe it's because of all the violence that we have allowed to come in and control and influence our child, our children. Amen? Uh Uh-huh. So, folks, we've got to be so careful. In our homes, our Christian homes, mom and dad, grandparents, you are in control of your home, not your kids and not your grandkids. Get up, you're going to church. Turn that junk off. No, you're not beyond the cell phone all day. What about some Bible time? Quality time, family time. Your youth is not in control in your home. Amen. Now, listen to me for a minute. I know politics, religious politics, I shouldn't preach on. I've seen folks that served here. Now get this, I've seen folks since I've been here that served here that has moved on to whatever church or life and, and that's their business and I, and I pray them, uh, uh, you know, Lord to bless them and farewell. But I see them months or years later and they say, well, little David wanted to go over to that church so mom and daddy, are you serious? Mom and dad didn't set the boundaries for a biblical church and we just go, we follow our children to church? Wow, I wish an eight-year-old would come and tell me what church I need to go to. According to this, another global poll, Listen to this. Now, this is global. This is around the world. Now, watch this. The average adult at 65 years old has watched nine years of TV. When a child finishes elementary school, they have seen on all these devices and TV, they have seen an average of 8,000 murders. 8, a child reaching the age of 18 on all these media, electronic gadgets, on the average, at age 18, they have seen 200 thousand acts of violence. I don't know why Johnny don't come to church. I've asked him. Listen to this before we close. In the 1960s, now listen to this. In the 1960s, talking about schools, our youth, folks, that's our future church. Amen? Amen? We've got to protect our youth. You say, well, that's, that's my son's granddaughter. Tell your son about it. They might not like it. Or your daughter, or whatever it may be. In the 1960s, I want to tell you the top, according to the polls, 
the top disciplinary actions in the schoolhouse. You ready? 1960s. Here's the top problems with school. School teachers said that they were talking. They were chewing gum. They were making noise. They were running in the hall. They were getting out of line. They wore improper clothing. And they wasn't throwing their paper into the trash cans. 1980. And we're still how many years behind for the 1980 poll? This was in 1980. I am sure it has tripled by now. Let's look at the disciplinary actions that needed to be served in the schools in the 1980s. Here's the top school offenses. Are you ready? Say amen. All right. Look at the decline. The top school offenses were rape, robbery, assault, burglary, arson, school shootings, bombings, murder, suicides, absenteeism, vandalism, extortion, drug and alcohol abuse, and the sale of, gang warfare, unwanted pregnancies, abortions, and venereal disease. Come a long way from chewing gum and missing the trash can. Folks, we need our homes not decaying but serving the Lord. Folks, when you look at these right here, it makes you want to cringe. That was in 1980. Can you imagine the violence in some schools, especially in the bigger cities, in the suburbs? Can you imagine the violence that goes on there? Can you imagine how sometimes in a Christian home that the average poll says that we spend seven hours a day on a computer. What are we doing? What are we thinking? We're letting the youth slip right out of our hands. Folks, we have to be alert to these things. You say, why? What's the big deal? Because Christ is coming back. And when Christ says, I'm finished... He says, I will destroy them with the earth. And as I was problem, or promised, speaking of the youth, um, sparing the rod and spoiling the child. Can I get an amen? <clears throat> anyway, folks, this is so serious. What about today, this afternoon, that the Lord says, that's enough. Folks, we got to be on busy for the Lord. Amen. We heard a little sermon about that earlier. Got to be busy for the Lord. Praise the Lord for that. We must be Christians that are alert and are awake and working because Christ at one time is going to split that eastern sky wide open. Amen.